Hello and welcome back and today we're going to talk about how to back up your Acer Store, NAS, be it a Nimbus Store or any NAS really, to a Microsoft OneDrive account or vice versa. Now a number of you have had Hotmail and Outlook accounts for more than a decade now. They were probably one of the most common email providers at the beginning and anyone that ever used things like MSN Messenger and more will know that having a Hotmail knocking around in some online storage space is actually pretty useful. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that NAS devices are still, I, in my honest opinion, uh, one of the very best ways to have your own reserve of data storage that is secure, safe, and shareable with those that you want to have access. And also, one of the best ways to sever your data from the internet if you so choose. That said though, Having a multi-tiered backup strategy cannot be understated and one of the best ways to back up your NAS other than R-syncing to another NAS or USB backups is utilizing online cloud platforms. Off-site backups mean that if your house building business, whatever goes up in smoke, then there's still those important files very, very far away on a cloud platform. And synchronization with cloud services is now so easy that you can synchronize everything from individual files and folders to whole volumes um, to third-party cloud platforms very easily and fully encrypted if you so choose. So I've already talked about Google Drive and Dropbox and today I want to talk about synchronization with Microsoft OneDrive platform. Head over to the App Store and download DataSync for OneDrive Business. Now this is very important because currently Microsoft OneDrive support, the traditional app, is no longer supported. You need to switch immediately over to the business application. Installing it is completely free and it is one click and install. Once it's installed, it will appear here on your taskbar and as you can see if you go to the traditional one they have now ceased supporting it asking you to move over to the business app go to the business application and click that button and it will invite you to log into your onedrive account do check that the padlock symbol is showing and that you're logging in to the microsoft account it will invite you to allow the app to access your cloud platform, letting you know what the permissions it needs. Now, one of the main reasons I think anyone should do this, particularly you home users, is there are loads of ways to get free online space, not just from OneDrive, but from a number of different vendors. You can get everything from two to five to 10 to 25 gigabytes of free storage from most of these providers within minutes of setting up an account. By doing that, what you can then do is if there are certain files on your NAS that are absolutely priceless, we're talking pictures of your you know, newborn baby, wedding day photos, or old scans of ancient pictures that don't exist anymore, if you encrypt these up just to keep them extra safe, or you don't, it's up to you, you can use those small amounts of free online storage space and synchronize your NAS with them so that although you're not backing up the whole NAS and all of those terabytes of storage, the megabytes and gigabytes of irreplaceable files are now backed up to another source. And that's one of the main ways I think a lot of you should take advantage of these cloud platforms. So clicking yes with this application will then begin the synchronization of just the folder structure. You've not finished yet, all you're synchronizing so far is just the accounts. You haven't synchronized the data. From here, if you have multiple folders in your OneDrive account, and I don't because I've only just set this up, click this arrow and it will list every single available folder in that OneDrive account. I'd already created these two folders by default and we can choose to synchronize all of them or some of them. Up here, it's allowing us to designate which folder we want all of our data uh, to be in on the NAS. So by default, the NAS creates a new folder within the home drive of the NAS, and this is where all the data synchronized from that OneDrive account will live. Though you can customize it and create your own folder if you so choose. Click next, and here is where we set up exclusions and tailored parameters. What that means in real terms is say we only want to back up images and none of these other things. This ensures that we're not using up valuable space on the cloud drive with unimportant folders. And if we do want to do a synchronized backup, chances are we are gonna be taking advantage of the uploads of our home or business internet connection. Consequently, you don't wanna use up all that bandwidth with big files that you didn't want to back up in the first place. Or you can set up limitations. So files that only meet certain criteria of size 
will be backed up. And these options allow you to take advantage of lots of different ways to cater your synchronization and make sure it doesn't affect your system. So we can add other parameters too to make sure you only back up certain kinds of files, PNGs, JPEGs, AVIs, and ensuring that only certain kinds of files will be backed up as needed. If we click next, we can then set up limitations of bandwidth consumption. And this is how we ensure that the synchronization will not eat up all of the available bandwidth in our home or business, thereby affecting everyone else on the network. Here is where we can talk about the way we want these two platforms to synchronize. We can have it so that the NAS and the OneDrive cloud platform are in constant synchronization. So what that means is if you delete or add a file to one, it automatically implements that change to the NAS or the cloud drive respectively, which is really, really handy for a constant live synchronization, but less handy if you're looking to have a long-term um, retention of data that you're deleting from one, but keeping the files on the other. And that's why these two options exist. These allow you to only control and change one item in the chain. So say you've got mobile devices, tablet devices, or work devices that are backing up files to a OneDrive business account. This setup will mean that as the files are backed up to the online server, they are then synchronized with the NAS. But if you delete them from the online server, they will still be kept on the NAS if you untick this just to keep it safe. Likewise, you can set it up that if you upload files to the NAS, it will then synchronize with the online platform and send files there. But if you delete them from the NAS, they still live on the Dropbox, uh, uh, not the Dropbox, the OneDrive, and are kept long term. You can set it up that they've got synchronization or not, but me personally, I think it's better to keep long term backups of all the files, even if they're deleted from the primary synchronization. If we click finish, it then runs a test of the synchronization that we want, and it tells us exactly what's going to happen in the available space and even allows us to edit the synchronization as needed. And that's it. We've now created a synchronization happening in real time between our, um, uh, our, Outlet, Outlet, saying, our OneDrive cloud space and our Asus Store NAS. I've already done a video for Google Drive and one for Dropbox, but of the three, I have to say that the synchronization with OneDrive is probably the best of the three. Do remember that you should enable um, facilities like encryption and more to ensure that synchronization between uh, the data you synchronize with third-party clouds is still encrypted. And therefore, if someone does hack those accounts in the future, like third-party cloud, you see it in the news all the time, the data is still useless to them, but still eminently useful to you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be carrying on this subject of synchronization soon with other NAS devices moving into the field of R-Sync, real-time synchronization, and of course, client synchronization too. So do stay tuned and do click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more. I'll see you guys on the next video.